Friends, my name is Anil Kumar Fine and I am uh, here to present before you GKRV online classes. Students, we have already completed the two chapters, the first one in history, that is when, where and how, and the second one in geography, the earth in the solar system. I hope you would have understood all the two chapters. Today we will study about civics. The first chapter is diversity. Friends, now the first chapter is diversity. In the subject civics, the first subject civics, please take out page number C152. Here we will study about the diversity and what type of diversity can be seen in our country and in detail. Okay, okay, students, first of all, we will know that uh, we all know that uh, you haven't studied social studies in the class 6 standard. Now you are studying it for the first time. Then, what is the meaning of civics? A question may be arising in your mind that why we are studying civics. The study of citizenship. The citizen means we the people of the country. We, when we are studying about our rights, duties, responsibilities, then that study is known as civics. In this chapter, the name of the topic is diversity. Students, what is diversity? A question may arise in your mind that a range of different things or differences, a range of differences is called diversity. But what type of diversity is, uh, can be seen in our country? You know our country's population is now 135 billion people. So you know that billions of people are staying in our country. They may belong to different religion, different caste, different, they may uh, have, uh, speak different languages, they wear different costumes, they eat different food. Means there are lots of differences. So there is a saying in Hindi that in every 10 kilometers, after we pass every 10 kilometers, the differences occur in everything, either languages, the dialects, the costumes, the food, the standard of living, the life, and everything changes in a matter of 10 kilometers in throughout our country. So therefore, what other types of differences we can see? We, I have written here some points, 8 to 9 points, and the first one is race. That friends, we all know that we the people of our country mostly belong to Aryans and Dravidians. We are divided into two groups, Aryans and Dravidians. Then the first difference is the race. What type of race we belong to? Then culture. Friends, we all know we are the people of Odisha and we are Odia people. So what the culture we are following? What the traditions? What the art? What the heritage we have? Got from our ancestors that is totally different from Chhattisgarh, Bihar, Andhra Pradesh, and Tamil Nadu. So this is one type of difference. Then national origins. It is also true that in India it is not only the Indian speak. People from different countries, you know, before partition, India was a subcontinent, and India was a very big country. The people from Pakistan, Afghanistan, Bhutan. Myanmar, Bangladesh, they all have shifted to our country. They now are our citizens of our country. So they all have settled in our country now. And different people from other countries, they have also settled due to our culture. Then region. Region means students, place. We, the people, we are staying in Odisha. Some people are staying in Chhattisgarh. Some are from Andhra Pradesh, some are from Jharkhand. So that differs from next to place. In Odisha also, there are 30 districts, so the people of Mahapada may not be the same as the people of Kaitap and Samarbu district. They all are different. Then the gender. Friends, we all know that nowadays we can say there are three genders. First one is male, then female, then transgender. You know, transgender has also come into existence from times immortal. Then age. Age is the important factor. All the people of our country, they are not of the same age. They are of different ages. Then means marital status. Students, marital status means are you single, are you married, are you divorced, are you widower, widower. So that is the name called marital status. Then politics. Politics has also made us different from one area to different. The people who are in politics, they may not be same as the people who are the local public or the common people. Then religion. Students, as we know, there are billions of people in our country. We have different religions to follow. The major religions are Hinduism, Islam, Christianity, Sikhism, then Buddhism, 
Jainism and all this type of different religions have, uh, will differ us in our religious process. Then ethnicity. Ethnicity means students, the race. Okay. Then the last one is socio-economic differences. Students, socio-economic differences means the amount of wealth, amount of income we are earning. There are different types of people in our society. There are differences in our society. The people, some are rich, some are middle class, and most of the people in our country are belong to the BPL, that is called the below poverty line. So there is a difference in our income also. Then the last one is health. Students, some are healthy, some are so in the ill, there some are sick, some are very healthy, some are uh, in a different manner, they may be in asylum, they are staying in mental hospitals, you can say. So everybody has a different state of mind and they all are they all have different health conditions. Then in this chapter, after I have told you that what type of diversities are seen in our Indian society, in our country, there are some sub points in this chapter. The first one is the diversity being seen in our society. Society, in Hindi you can say the Samaj, what the people of our country belong to and what type of differences they can be seen. The first point is diversity in our society. Then here two states are taken into consideration to compare between each other that is the two states are the first one is Bihara which is situated in the northeastern part of our country and the second one is Tamil Nadu Tamil Nadu is situated in the southernmost country of our southernmost part of our country they are totally different so in every aspect of their part so we will study them in detail and the next part is diversity in India that as a whole if diversity or differences can be seen and what are the differences so that can be studied in the next topic and the last, second last topic is unity in diversity students as you all know that our country has lots of diversities and why still we are united what, what has kept us in one bind or in one thread we are all binded by one thread and that is called the national integration and the last topic is the effects of diversity that due to diversity what are the types of effects we can see in our culture in our country or in our society the first topic we have uh, we will study now is the diversity in our society so uh, I have told you the meaning of diversity that is differences and what is the meaning of society society means a group of people staying in a particular area and they are following the rules of the society that can be called as a society or in Hindi what uh, I have told you that the meaning of society is Samas so the first diversity can be seen in a family that no two brothers or sisters or no two people are very much same if you say the so twins can be same no they have different qualities your brother your sister they may have different qualities he may be very good in studies you may not be good in studies he may, his nature may be good your nature may not be good so there is a difference in character, behavior, his health, his uh, income. So we can see the first diversity in our family or starting from the childhood till the old. So there are differences in first in our family. Then what type of people are staying in society? Students, uh, if you are staying in Odisha, you may be thinking that the only Odia people are staying. But it is not that so. So we can see different types of people. We can take the example of our town Kriya Road. Then there are different types of people like the Marathi, the Gujaratis, the Tamilians, the South Indians, the Punjabis, with the Odia people and the Chhattisgarh people. They all are staying in a single town. So this is the biggest example of diversity in a town or we can say in a society. In a single area also or in a colony also you can find different people. They are maybe following different religions in our town I can say. We can find temples, there are mosques, then gurdwaras, then churches, they all are present in our town. So if, by looking at this, you can see that there are the difference of religion also. So and income also. You can find some very rich people, very poor people, and the very poorer people and the middle class people 
or of staying in a society. So that are the difference which you can see in our society. Then the traditional culture if you look upon if the Odia people are wearing the simple dresses you can see the South Indian people who uh, wear usually dhotis and some white shirts and white dhotis you can see that is the uh, symbol of their attire in South Indian people and especially the Punjab if will take example of the Punjab people they usually wear kurtas and they are ladies they not wear sarees they wear um, kurtis and uh, some Afghanist type of dresses so that can be seen in a society and there are some different places also that is also a type of diversity Odisha you can find plain areas but in northern areas in places like Jammu and Kashmir you can see there are hilly areas, mountainous areas, valleys and there are coastal areas like uh, Mumbai, Chennai they, are, they all are coastal areas so this is also a type of difference and the place of inhabitants also make us to differ in different types so that uh, allows us to adopt different things in types of uh, different areas if you are staying in mountainous area or some hilly areas it may be cold so we, we usually wear woolen clothes throughout the year but that changes with the plain areas where in only cold or winter season we wear woolen clothes so that is the type of difference we can say that is a type of difference in India thousands of languages are there dialects are there we speak Odia, we speak Hindi but as you change the state the languages also change the dialects also change and India is the best a unique example of diversity the people uh, what they eat, what they drink what they wear, what the religion they follow that differs from place to place from the all throughout the country India is mostly a plain the lives of the people of these states are quite different from each other the people living in different areas they usually follow a different culture they wear, their, they wear traditional dresses so that differs from place to place so you can't say that that a place of people staying in Meghalaya they are following the same rules as the the students, or sorry, the people staying in Gujarat. So that differs from Krishna. That is all about diversity in uh, For example, in this uh, chapter, diversity, in the subject of civics, the two states are taken into consideration. For you can see in the case study, the first one is Meghalaya. Students, we all know that the state of Meghalaya is situated in the northeastern part of India. Or Meghalaya, we can say, is a uh, state in the group of seven sisters. You know students what is seven sisters? They are the seven states of the northeastern region. Meghalaya, also known as the Award of Clouds, is one of the most beautiful states in the country. Nature has blessed the state with abundant rainfall, sunshine, thick forests, high plateaus, tumbling waterfalls, crystal clear rivers and meandering streams and above all strong, intelligent and hospitable people. If you have ever visit Megara, then you can see the pictures you beauty, names and the different types of sceneries of the state Megara. The what type of people live in Megara? The three most important tribes in the state of Megara live in the state. They are the Garo, the Khasi and the Jaitya. Friends, I am writing here the Garo Hasi and Jaintia. Students, these three tribes are the most important tribes of the state of Meghalaya and they are named after the names of the hills situated in the state of Meghalaya. So, large majority of the people, large majority of the people or population practices Christianity. English music is very popular in the state of Meghalaya and you can see Meghalaya has produced some very popular brand band groups like the Shillong Chamber of Choir. Choir students, the word choir means a group of musicians who are playing different musical instruments and often Shillong is called the rock capital of India. Not just rocks means what the rocks, Pathar we can say, it is not just this town is made up of rocks, 
it is the rock music you can see the modern music it is usually influenced from the english people or the western audience therefore it is also known as the rock capital of our country as you can see in the picture students you can see in the chapter in the book page number c 153 the different tribes are wearing different um, at all they are wearing different uh, costumes so they differ from their own groups and therefore they are called the traditional wears as you know that shillong is the capital city of meghalaya the capital is said and is a picture skewed a landscape of pine covered hills and rapid streams and captivating waterfalls a perfect example of a beautiful place or the perfect gateway from the uh, of the plain area or the mountainous area if you visit meghalaya you can see the pictures you beautiful places and the whole state is covered with different places then students will know about the occupation of the people of meghalaya the agriculture is the main occupation of the people in the state and 83% of the people here practice agriculture and totally dependent for their livelihood tourism is also an important uh, occupation of the source of income of the people of meghalaya because most of the people visit this north eastern places and the the people of the local people are a lot of money or their main source of income is also uh, tourism apart from any culture rice and maize are the major food crops non vegetarian food is a popular food for the people of meghalaya and garo style of preparation of food is totally different from the different two tribes that is the khasi and jaintia meghalaya students meghalaya has abundant is a certain dry number of um streams rivers and number of tourist attractions and we can see lot of tourist attractions or destinations in the state of meghalaya meghalaya is dotted with a number of lovely tourist spots shillong has a number of beautiful sites like the wards lake the lady highway park renamed as ka fan nongle park or the polo ground elephant falls and the shillong peak overlooking the city and a golf course which is one of the best in the country similarly the other hills have also a lot of pictures to locations and destinations students now we will study about the festivals of the three tribes that is the garo khasi and jaintia and about them the why they are celebrated and how they are celebrated the first one is friends the festivals of garo hills friends as we know that garo is one of the uh, three important tribes of the state of meghalaya among the garo the most important festival is the bongala friends this festival is the god bongala it is held in the month of october in the month of october friends or november it is celebrated This is celebrated in the name of the god in the honor of the god Salzong the sun god of fertility friends this festival marks the end of the period of toil toiling hard in the fields bringing a good yield of crops everybody young and old uh, joins in the festivities the men beat the another dance men beat the drums and another people or all the people join them in groups students this uh, festival is related to harvesting students we all know that in odisha no the festival of noaka is celebrated during the time of harvesting and it is related to agriculture so as the festival bongala is related to harvesting and all the people as we i have told you in the 3% of the population practice agriculture And therefore they are celebrating this festival another important festival in this region is the chambil mao or the pomlo dance what is the pomlo dance friends the name is very strange 
and in pomelo dance what does they do they tie different types of fruits in their waist in the waist they tie in the, in the help of a rope and they dance in groups in in a spherical manner students you have seen they are wearing some traditional dresses in the pic or in the textbook they are wearing traditional dresses they are carrying crowns and they are beating them in a large manner and they move from round to round students then the next is the next set of tribal people are the festival of khasi hills students khasi hills khasi hills is one type of tribe and among the three the khasis have two important festivals the first one is the namran dance the first one is namran students the words may be sometimes uh, used uh, in a uh, odd manner but they are the local names of the uh, of the dances of the local dances of the folk local folks and it is held in the month of october november and the sarg sut maisna held in the month of april it is a religious festival for the thanks given to the god almighty to the god for their good harvest and pray for the peace and prosperity in the community they all are very much devoted to their god to their uh, culture and they are all to, due to because of their traditional values they all worship this god and this type of festivals are being celebrated called nagpur mahapur and an important part of this festival is pongal friends What is Pongal? What is Pongal? Pongal is a festival, or it is known as the sacrifice of the goats. You know, goats in Hindi is a bali dinner. So the sacrifice of the goats is called Pongal. It is offered by the subjects of Siam, Siam of Khairi. The Siam is the administrative head of the state of the Meghalaya. Offerings are made in the ancestors of the ruling clan. students this was the story about khasis then the next is the last one jaintia now we will study about the festivals of the jaintia hills or the people of the jaintia or the jaintia tribes so behdai tribe so students have a look at the textbook then in the page number c155 it is then behdai tribe you can say this word is uh, refers to the important dance festival of the jaintias it is celebrated after the sowing period is over students uh, please take note is that the first two festivals of the different tribes were celebrated after the harvesting is over but now it is celebrated when the sowing is over at joy town this festival is being celebrated in the month of july young men are symbolic driving away of the evil spirits by beating the roofs of the people they celebrate this festival by beating the roofs of the people the jaintia said another dance form also for entertainment called the laho dance celebrating this by wearing a traditional attire where young men and women dance to the merriment of the audience So students, this was all about the state of Bihar. Then we will go to the state of Tamil Nadu. Now we will study about Tamil Nadu. We all know that Tamil Nadu is situated in the southernmost part of the country, along with Kerala. They both are the southernmost tip uh, situated in our country. Agriculture is the primary sector of Tamil Nadu. Mainly, seventy percent of the people is engaged in agriculture. It is also a large industrial centre. Most of the industries and factories our from country is situated in Tamil Nadu. We all know that Tamil Nadu and Gujarat states like Maharashtra, Punjab, Haryana are one of the most developed states in our country. So the local language of the state of Tamil Nadu is Tamil. Should we know Tamil is the oldest language of our country? In Nadu, in the in the history uh, chapter we have studied the meaning of Nadu is village. means the village of the tamils by this the name tamil nadu has been arise the climate is very hot here 
people wear very simple dresses you have seen like white dhoti white shirts that of that too also in half they wear very simple slippers so this traditional simple traditional dress says that how simple are the people of tamil nadu they speak the language tamil tamil is the oldest language in our country it is considered as the oldest language in our country the staple diet is rice majority of the people are pure vegetarian not only their food is different from mehwara but everything you can say that there is a dress there are uh, attire there are places there are eating habits there are uh, leisure habits everything differs from the state of mehwara so some popular musical instruments in the state are nandaneshwaram veena tamura and flute this state is also famous for metal wear and tanjore is a place the very old place very ancient place in the state of tamil nadu it is used for or is famous for paintings terracotta woodcraft and stone carving the most important form of tamil nadu painting is the tanjore painting which is or which originated in tanjore in the 9th century this painting block and coated with zinc oxide over which the image is being painted then we come to the food habits students uh, in the morning in the breakfast if you have ever eaten idli uttapam dosa then you know that this all dishes have come from tamil nadu if you have eaten that now you can know that this dishes are from the people of the tamil the traditional uh, dishes of tamil nadu is all this then pongal then the main festival of the tamil nadu is pongal Likewise, I say in our state, Odisha, in the most western uh, part of our uh, state, Pongal is our Navratri is celebrated. So as Pongal is a festival celebrated in the state of Tamil Nadu, and it is called the Harvest Festival. Different festivals are also there, but the Harvest Festival of Tamil Nadu is the Pongal. Now we have uh, studied about Pongal. It is the Harvest Festival of Tamil Nadu. Then the festival. Adi Parku students, the name is a uh, you know little bit odd. Adi Parku is celebrated on the banks of the rivers, welcoming the fresh water of the Tamil uh, monsoon. Students, we know that the monsoon starts from Kerala, entering Tamil Nadu and different parts of the country. So Adi Parku is celebrated with the new water after being after the uh, rain water is being given from the. Uh, monsoon. Then, as I have told you, Adi Parku is a festival of welcoming the monsoon. Then, there is one more festival in the state of Tamil Nadu. That is Kartik Yuvan Dipam. Kartik Yuvan Dipam is a festival celebrated in the name of the honor of of the Lord Shiva by lighting the uh, by lighting in the lamps. You can say in Hindi you can say Deep. So, by so while lighting the Deep, the festival. Kartikeya Dipam is celebrated. Then Tamil Nadu is famous for their classical music also. Carnatic music, the different types of music are all from South India. It is primarily oriented towards the vocal music and the different dance forms. The all the dance forms like Kuchipudi, Kathak, and all are all belong to the Tamil Nadu. All the different sub southern parts of our country. The dominant classical dance is among Tamil is the Bharatanatyam. The dance is an exposition of the story contained in a song, and it is usually performed by one performer on stage with an orchestra of drums and drone and one or more singers backstage. They are giving a prompting for the story. This is all about the uh, dance form of Bharatanatyam. Then there is a village or The, all the villages in Tamil Nadu, they all are traditionally well cultured. Then the third group, the, the literally which means street play, street play uh, can be seen in different parts of the Tamil Nadu. This is a form of a village theatre. What I have told you, they are all traditionally well. Uh, then the street plays can be seen all as a folk opera, means opera. They can be seen in different parts of the. Created in Tamil Nadu, it is traditionally performed in the village squares and different corners of the districts or state. Then, 
we have seen the people living in the villages they are all traditionally well informed they are uh, performers of the street plays and they all know the differences of the society they are also different from the state of Meghalaya the next topic is unity and diversity as i have told you earlier that our country india is a very big in size and 135 billion people are staying in our country as i have told you that thousands of languages all the religions are all practiced in our country so different religions we can also see in our country like hinduism most of the people in india are hindu people then muslim then christianity then punjabis the jainism the buddhism and the one more one more religion we can see it is called the parsis and the zoroastrianism so they all are of different religion they all follow the different god they all the people have all different qualities or different um, features so in a single country if we follow or if you can see this differences in our religion then india is the best example to the country in diversity and we can see also the people of jew jew means a part of christianity the the god jesus christ belong to jew so they all follow different uh, worship places like the parsis should the parsis go to the fire temple we the hindu people go to the temple the christian to the church the muslim to the mosque and the punjabi to the gurudwara so they all have different uh, qualities they all go to different places of worship then should why this is so why this has happened over the long time a long period of time of our country because many invaders from the times in memory many invaders like the arabs the turks the mughals like and then the british they all have invaded india ruled india so therefore after their after their departure after they after the exodus their culture remained here you can say if you visit uh one the uh, goa or pondicherry you can see the french the portuguese the italian culture why this is so because the people of that uh, country they ruled over pondicherry and goa they remained here they left their tradition art and culture there there you can see the different buildings the churches of that style and you know that britishers ruled over india for 200 years so the all the things which we see now the english speaking style of or the most of the things the churches the school buildings the college buildings different monuments they all have been gifted by the britishers so they have a large effect and if you will visit delhi you can see the mughal influence because the mughal um, invaded india and ruled india <coughs> for most of the time then the next is how our country was formed the leadership of the under the leadership of the freedom fighters like mahatma gandhi jawaharlal nehru subhash chandra bose bal gangadhar tilak so they all belong to different castes different religions but they all united together that's why it is known as unity and diversity they united together and made our country free if you will take an example jawaharlal nehru he was a brahmin he was a brahmin he was a kashmiri brahmin he was a kashmiri pandit and Maulana uh, Abdul Kalam was a Muslim. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar was from the Dalit family, and uh, Rajendra Prasad was the first president of our country. He was a Thayar. They all were from different religions. They all were from different languages. But they united together to make our country free. Therefore, this rightly uh, expresses our country that is called unity and diversity. So this has been seen from the thousands of years, from hundreds of years, decades, centuries. Therefore, our country has different ideals. That is called the unity and diversity. And the students, the last topic is effects of diversity. Students, the last topic here is what are the influences? You can say what are the influences? What are the influences of diversity? If you will take an example of one town, that when different types of people live in society, you adapt, you get to know about their religion. or the custom or the tradition likewise i said when you um, take your breakfast and even when you when you see that it is dosa uttapam in your plate then you can know that you are adopting a culture of the south this is the uh, 
food style or staple diet of the southern people. If you eat Bogla, then you can see that this uh, Bogla is a traditional food of the Gujaratis. And if you eat Dagma, then it is a traditional food of the Korea. So these are the effects. We can see, and we, when we wear so white clothes and white outfits, then we, 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 we are adopting the culture of the southern people. If you are wearing a carbon, then it is from the Gujarati. Punjabi people. So that can be that are the different effects we can see in our society. Effects of diversity that there can be an other points. Diversity enriches our lives. We all live in diverse conditions. Our languages, buildings, clothes are not the same. In fact, they have never been the same. They have changed for different centuries. What we are what our grandparents were wearing ancestors were wearing, we are not wearing that because we are in a different world. We have moved from the ancient world to the modern world. Indians are willing to take in the new dress in the past, new ideas in the past. They also borrowed, changed or adopted the ideas to develop something new. The ability proved the quality life in many facts. Thus, our ways of life became unique and the only one of its kind is the world. Therefore, India is called a country with diversity. A proof of our country's unique diversity and amazing diversity lies in the fact that Indian constitution uh, recognizes 22 regional languages. Just remember, friends, 22 regional languages Indian constitution has approved. And just imagine that if languages are 22, then how many dialects are there? A single language has thousands of types of dialects. These languages are spoken by different people and in different regions of the country. Their diversity may be given expression or impression that they divide the people in different manner. And this affects the unity of our country, India. And these experiences for the past 70 years after our independence proved that India, the India is a country with diversity and we still are united together. So by this line, I can say that um, the diversity has made us uh, united together and national integration of our country has proved that we all are one. By this line, I am ending this chapter students. I hope you would have understood the chapter very well and uh, you will be able to complete the exercise. Thank you. Okay students, by ending this line, ending this chapter, I want to say that I want to give a message that stay home, stay safe and try to remain in your home and try to complete your studies and have a nice day. Goodbye.